we just go back to the beginning, man. You know, like um, like 1983 or some shit. My dad was, you know, smoking reefer with my Uncle Greg, and, you know, that was the thing. So it's not like I woke up a year ago and was like, yo, let me get into the weed industry. I think that if you've been smoking weed or you've been, or weed's been around your life, and, you know what I'm saying, and, what, you know, how you grew up, and your parents were smoking weed, you're kind of part of the weed industry right. then. Because, I mean, the weed industry doesn't have, like, a President Obama or nobody in charge of it. I mean, you if you smoke weed or you've sold weed or you have an idea about weed or you just love the oils or appeal, what it, anything weed. If you like the the merchandise, weed merchandise, you're right. part of the weed industry. So uh, to answer that question, man, I, I mean, weed is just, I mean, it's been around since Cowboys and Indians. Cookies. These days, uh, you know, um, my my, straw, my strawberry banana strain is unmatched right now. And uh, you know, shout out to my boy uh, who got the uh, bubble the bubble gum cookies is what I'm smoking right this minute. I haven't put this thing down. I smelled it, man. That really does. Smell. It smells like bubble gum, which is crazy, and it doesn't lose the smell like all the way through. And the taste is crazy. It's like this is crazy. He serves them, yeah, they serve them in uh, these little, like, uh, cat food canisters. And so as soon as you peel it back, yeah. it's like you get a whiff of that bubble gum and you just, like, you, you're gone, man. Like, this has uh, risen to the top of, like, strains that I love. It's top five right here. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, the banana one, I smell Yeah, go ahead, man, hit that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, man. Yeah, it's Friday. You me? It's Friday, man. We ain't got no jobs. We ain't got shit to do. <laughs> Dude, that tastes awesome. Yeah, you keep that, man. Right. You know, I know where to get that. Inserts. <laughs> Seven years old, man. My brother Face let me take a hit of some chronic, and he had. I think he stole it from uh, one of the bigger homies in the hood, and you know. But it was like chronic. You know what I'm saying? Like chronic in 1987, when everybody was smoking stress. Right. Like this was a rare jewel. It was like almost finding a diamond in the middle of Africa. It's like you know. So I hit that shit when I was seven. I can remember coughing, feeling like I was gonna die. Yeah. And my brothers was laughing at me and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure if they had Snapchat, we would have footage oh, of that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm but, glad they didn't, man. Yeah, man, but they was laughing at me and shit. Your bitch ass up, look at you. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> help me, you know? So that was the first time when I was seven years old, man. That you were late to class that day. <laughs> you know what? It was at nighttime, man. And my mom used to work at the post office, so she worked the graveyard shift. So by the time she got home next morning, even if I told her they would, it, it would be like, you know, sounding like a lie. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was my first time. And then actively, I never smoked again until I was like, maybe like 12, sixth grade. Okay. So after school, sixth grade, and you know, if for any reason, any kid or child ever sees this, that wasn't cool and that's not cool and you could get into a lot of trouble. So don't fucking do that. But yeah, me, when I was uh, 12, you gotta understand, man, growing up in Compton is just a little bit different from growing up any other place in the world, man, to me. It's, uh, you don't, a lot of people don't really make it out, man, and, and, and Compton is hard. So being 12 years old, smoking weed in Compton, man, that's some pretty, pretty tough shit. Whenever my kids are ready to smoke weed, I'm gonna know. Okay. Because they're gonna tell me. Okay. And if, let's just say my son's 15 and he wants to take his first hit of the weed, I'm gonna make sure that it's the most fucked up, like the most craziest strain ever in life. So it's gonna be like, yo, I don't know what happened. Like you gonna feel like you ate a pack of fucking like edible gummies. This is like when parents, when their kids say they wanna smoke, they make them smoke a pack, a whole carton of cigarettes. Yeah, that, yeah, that's fucking, yeah. And then you'd be fucking dead. So I, I think I would probably do the same thing so they can have a terrible first fucking experience uh -huh. and be like, I don't think that's cool. I smoke with my dad, I'm good. How old are they now? Uh, Harlem is 13, about to be 14. Hey, man, it's almost this time, huh? Yeah, about time, <laughs> yeah, about the time to get your ass knocked out. <laughs> yeah, nah, we ain't doing that, man. You know what I'm saying? He in the, he in the you know, sports, and he's an athlete, so he doing that. My other kids are nine and, nine and six, so they not, you know, it's going to be a little while. I dab like once in my life and almost died again. So, you know, because I, I like, I'm extreme with it. So I took the biggest dab, you know, of course, I, if I'm a dab, I took a daddy, granddaddy dab. And I almost died, man. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't really dab that much. I think it's cool if you really just want to get blowed out of your fucking mind. It's a different dabbing is the way. It, it, you know, it almost made me feel like a fucking 
like a real addict. Like I felt like after I dab, like I was tripping a little yeah. bit. But uh, I love it, man. Yeah, Josh is there, man. He laughing off camera, man. But yeah. You know what I think I'm gonna do is uh, uh, you see like you, how you in your thirties? Yeah. Yeah. So you can remember when um, fucking you remember back in like '95, Quincy Jones put out this dope ass R&B album where he had like Babyface and and uh like Ger I mean he had like Gerald Levert, Babyface, um, I think Barry White was on there, <laughs> Tamia, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It was like Q's Juke Joint or something like that. So I love R and B. You know what I'm saying? I really, really love R and B. Uh, and so I'm gonna do an R and B album, sort of like that, where I just executive produce the whole album and get cats like The Weeknd, Sam Smith, Black, uh, Drizzy, Ty Dolla Sign, and just make a dope ass like neo soul uh, yeah. album. And so that's yeah. what I'm gonna focus on. I think I'm gonna call it uh, um, You, Me, and Her, oh, and cool. just put out some dope. Ass I'm not gonna rap on it. No one's rapping on it. It's just, just straight R and B. It's gonna be dope as fuck. Just a vibe. Yeah. If you smoke or you chill, that's it, man. It's just gonna be dope as shit. It's gonna be a fucking huge, like a dope ass vibe. You know what? Uh, these new these new dudes, man. They uh, they on a different vibe. And uh, you know what? Instead of you know motherfuckers out there who saying that oh hip hop used to be like this when it was DMX and you uh, know and and hip hop used to be like this when it was you know Run DMC. And hip hop used to be like this when it was Game 50 and Nas and Eminem. Instead of doing that shit, why don't you just congratulate them young cats yeah. and get your old ass out the way, you know what <laughs> I'm saying? And allow them to flourish as hip hop is today. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I respect it and uh, I got a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, love and, uh, you know, I, and I listen to, you know, all that shit, man. And I think it's cool. It's, it's their culture and you can't take. Especially if that's uh, if it's the if it's the majority of yeah. what hip hop is today, yeah. you can't take that away. That should have right. just run you over. So you either become a chameleon and you you blend in and you deal with it and you vibe with them and maybe yeah. make songs with them or at least appreciate it. Yeah. And um, you know you go on with your day, man. Other than that, you are just you just a hating ass nigga, man. There's only a handful of rappers that could really uh, you know really um, express themselves. Uh, and sound, you know, educated. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these niggas is just, you know, from the hood and just, you know, dumb as shit. And then you got some that are very intellectual and outspoken and, you know, can voice their opinions, man. Um, me, I, I, I don't really, I don't really get into politics because I think it's like, you know, if you watch Scandal, like, I feel like it's a secret society, and if you get too much in the way, they'll try to, like, you know, MLK you or something like that. I mean, it's very possible for you to go to, you know, the doctor as Easy did for, you know, uh, bronchitis and end up having AIDS. So I don't really fuck with them people's politics. I keep my opinion, you know, to myself and, you know, amongst uh, my friends and family. But other than that, man, I think, I don't know. It, other than encouraging somebody to vote or taking a stance, when, when we're blatantly being disrespected as, you know, a race, or, and that may be whatever race you are, you know what I'm saying? Um, other than that, I don't just, you know, I don't think it's wise to just go that far to digging into people's politics. And if you do want to go that far, then you should just run for office. Start at, like, you know, mayor of your city or city council, then graduate to senator, and then go do your thing. If you do want to get that deeply involved. But if you want to get deeply involved in politics and you still want to be, you know, an entertainer, you know, you might want to chill. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of things that you need that might be stripped from you, taken away from you, main thing being endorsements. All this, all of these politicians, all these politics, and all these business people, the billionaires in this country, people that run this country are all kind of, you know what I'm saying, in the same pot. So you don't want to take food off your own plate. So, you know, most times it's, you should just keep a lid on that shit. This right now is a real pivotal time for the whole cannabis industry because this is prohibition but for marijuana and it's happening and starting to legalize and once once um like just when alcohol was illegal the patrons and hennessies of the world were criminals smugglers and shit like that as soon as it became legal then all of a sudden you got you know what i'm saying the hennessy corp and you have you know patron and all those brands those old ass wine brands and just liquor brands from back in the day are now the billionaires of the world so i'm saying imagine 
don't even imagine because it's happening the marijuana industry you know what i'm saying so if you you know if you've been fighting for the last you know 15 20 years and with your product and you stay you know at it and it's known now now that it's starting to legalize once it legalizes across the board then now all of a sudden you are newport and you are marlboro you know what i'm saying so i would say for anybody with fucking any sense it's now i mean it's been the time but now it's really time to uh take some money and i don't know getting into something and, uh, and a lot of people think that the cannabis industry is all about weed. No, there's products. You know what I'm saying? It's just like cleaning. Cleaning ain't all about just having a towel. You need soap, man. You need wood cleaner. You need, you know, fucking AJ. Like, it's so many different products. You know what I'm saying? You need just, you know, remember when people, like, I think it was like the early 90s when they came out with the Swiffer and that motherfucker took over, like, mops and shit. So it's like a lot of different, you know, avenues that you can tap into as far as the cannabis industry to make money if you're not a person that smokes weed or, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Just to get in, it'd be smartest investment um, of your life, right? you know, right now. I think that for the most part worldwide, uh, that people still have a negative image of what marijuana really is or what it does. I think possibly because they haven't smoked it. I mean, now, so look at first when, like I said, again, I always go back to prohibition because in the early 1900s when alcohol was illegal, you had a lot of people that looked down on it. You know, hey, oh, you over there drinking alcohol with those whores and, you know, like we are over, we Christian people, like that was a real thing. Now I think all across the world, everybody over the age of 21 has had a drink or two in their life. So I think, you know, fucking 30, 40 years from now, the, the, the whole, you know, everybody on the earth will be the same way. You will have at least took a hit um, of marijuana in your lifetime. And so social acceptance comes over time. And uh, I mean, if you like me, you don't really give a fuck how long it takes other people to accept it because you don't care and you're going to do you regardless. So, uh, yeah, man, that's my take on that.